The toys of Playtime Co. seem to be divided in a variety of different ways. For example, followers of the prototype versus followers of Poppy. Toys who used to be children versus toys who were staff. But there's another difference that isn't really spoken about, and that is toys who can speak and toys who can't. Verbal characters include Poppy, Mommy Longlegs, The Smiling Critters, Catnap, and The Prototype. Miss Delight can also speak, but like 1006, she's technically not a toy, and since she's a teacher, it's necessary for her to communicate with her students. The toys that don't speak include Huggy Wuggy, Kissy Missy, and Boxy Boo, just to name a few. We could also include Bunzo Bunny, PJ Pugapillar, and Brawn, although we don't have enough interactions with them to determine if they're actually non-verbal. We can guess, however, and say that Brawn couldn't speak because he was turned into a bigger body and he was just confused and very disoriented. The scientific reports didn't say anything about his communication. There's still a possibility that he could talk, but based on the information from the tape, it doesn't seem likely. We have eye movement. Can you hear us, Thomas? 1199 displayed much more disorientation than we expected. Also, it's clear that all Playtime toys have a voice that's part of their branding. For example, we encounter Huggy, Kissy, and Bronze cardboard cutouts in Chapter 2, therefore we're able to hear their voice lines. However, it's important to note that these are their toy versions. Their bigger bodies don't follow the same rules. So why is that? Could it have to do with the timeline in which these toys were created? Maybe as time passed, playtime became more advanced with technology and newer toys had the ability to talk while the older ones couldn't. However, this theory is quickly debunked when you realize that Poppy was created in 1950 and speaks very well, despite being the oldest toy that we see in the factory. And something like the Bigger Bodies initiative would definitely cause an advancement in technology, especially since Playtime was spending more money on the development of labs. However, these investments couldn't prevent all Bigger Bodies from being mute. The next possible theory is that scientists simply failed in some of their experiments. The Bigger Bodies initiative was completely new in 1991 and of course many mistakes were made. For example, they had to completely change Braun's testing methods because of his disoriented state of mind. Huggy Wuggy ended up escaping the factory and killing employees despite once being an obedient specimen. And when you look at toys like Boxy Boo vs Dog Day, you see a major difference. Dog Day is smart and coherent, a perfect example of a successful bigger body. Whereas Boxy Boo just does whatever he wants and is out of control and more archaic. Even the prototype, who was praised for his knowledge, was also defined as having a flaw in the scientific processes. The prototype seems to possess an unprecedented level of intelligence beyond that of all other test subjects, as well as an alarming willingness to commit violence. Further suppression treatments will need to be enacted to ensure that no other experiments develop these qualities. So it's not too far-fetched to believe that scientists simply made some sorts of error in their experiments, which prohibited certain specimens from speaking. This error could possibly have to do with their voice boxes. For example, in the Poppy Playtime maintenance tape, we can see a bloody voice box being taken out of her back. This gives us a glimpse into the anatomy of other Playtime toys. Mistakes could have been made while creating or handling the voice box. The next theory is that Playtime never intended for certain bigger bodies to speak in the first place. For instance, Huggy's main function is to hug children so maybe Playtime didn't deem it necessary to put emphasis on his voice. Meanwhile, someone like the prototype wasn't created to hang around children, but rather to be the start of the Bigger Bodies initiative, molded into a servant for Playtime Co. so they gave him a voice box on purpose. And don't get me wrong, when Harley Sawyer announced the initiative, 
He expected all bigger bodies to work, so while I do believe that toys like Huggy were also used as servants for the company, they most likely had specialized roles and some were more catered to children. And this isn't too much of a surprise, since there's a bunch of cartoon characters made for kids who don't speak. There's Tom and Jerry, Pink Panther, and Snoopy from Peanuts, just to name a few. But when it comes to newer cartoons, it's a technique used to emphasize their simplicity and help children understand body language and actions. Perhaps they figured someone like Kissy, who was made to entertain children, wouldn't need the ability to speak. The opposite can be said for Mommy Longlegs though, who served as a mother figure and guided orphans throughout the game station, so speaking was a necessity for her. And if you believe that Ollie is simply a toy phone, this would also make sense since speaking would be a main function of his model. Another explanation for nonverbal characters could be that they weren't always nonverbal and suddenly stopped for some reason. For example, Huggy was once known by scientists to be an obedient specimen, but once he decided to escape the facility, his allegiance shifted from Playtime Co. to the prototype. Perhaps Huggy only answers to 1006 and not anyone else to demonstrate his undying loyalty to him. Another example of this is when Catnap warns us to leave before he kills us, but this is his only voice line in the game as he doesn't speak to us otherwise. It's probably because he doesn't feel the need to as he only communicates openly with the prototype. It makes you wonder why Catnap decided to give us this warning to escape in the first place. But similarly, when it comes to toys like PJ and Bunzo, perhaps they also have the ability to talk, but were afraid of Mommy Longlegs. Mommy probably instructed them to not speak so that they wouldn't interfere with her plans of capturing us, so they were silenced and only followed her commands. But what if it had nothing to do with the prototype or mommy? Perhaps it all boils down to personality instead. Whether or not toys speak can also be determined by their past lives. For example, someone like Kissy is rather shy. We can see this in chapter 2 as she opens the gate for us but swiftly exits and doesn't interact with us further. In chapter 3, we see Kissy go through a series of poses to demonstrate her timidness and shy nature. Maybe as a child, Kissy was very quiet and that part of her personality was infused in her bigger body form. She could have also experienced something traumatic, which made her react in a way that would render her mute. For toys like Dog Day, he could have been more extroverted and outspoken as a child. Dog Day's persona is very energetic and courageous. Perhaps children and toys were not only matched up with the ones that they liked the most, but also toys that matched their personalities the best. Kissy is rather calm and collected, so a child that was brave and outspoken wouldn't really match her very well. But while this theory somewhat holds up, something tells me that the reasoning is a bit more sinister, like a precaution put in place by playtime scientists. Let's revisit Poppy's maintenance tape. We see the removal of the voice box, but why is it significant? Perhaps some toys did something bad that prompted us for this piece to be removed. For example, someone like Huggy who became an obedient follower of the prototype turned violent and was thought to be a threat by employees. He could have also had a bad influence on the children, feeding them negative information about the company. The voice box could also be removed to prevent the prototype from conspiring with others while he planned the hour of joy. When he tried to escape for the first time and killed an employee, Playtime probably believed that it would be best to cut ties of communication between other toys. But why take away Huggy's voice box and not the prototypes? It could be that the prototype was simply way more intelligent than Huggy and scientists didn't want to dismantle 1006 in any way. So they decided that it would be best to keep him whole in the name of research. And if they discovered his voice mimicking abilities, 
This would have made them more interested in studying his voice, and toys like Poppy wouldn't permanently get their voice box removed because she didn't serve as much of a threat. She sided against the prototype and most likely wouldn't be in constant communication with him. With Poppy and the prototype being some of the first and most intelligent experiments of playtime, it makes sense that employees would want to preserve their voices and keep them as whole as possible. While this theory doesn't explain why toys like Catnap still have his voice box, it makes you wonder whether or not certain toys had special treatment from the scientists. But what do you guys think? Let me know down in the comments. Thanks for watching, subscribe, and click on this video right here.